Hello and welcome back to week three of our current scene coloring breakdown series here on the Sweet November Stamps YouTube channel. I'm Amy and I am co-owner and illustrator for Sweet November Stamps and we are creating a floral cave scene for our cute little uh, dragon that recently released. It's our little three by four called Extraordinarily Happy. You can see in the last couple weeks We've been working on the dragon and starting our scene. This week, we are going to be adding to our garden of flowers with some tall gladiola type uh, flowers because I thought that would be fun to share. So I'm going to pull out my pinks and we are going to start working on adding some pink flowers into our scene. So let's see, which pinks do I want to start with? I think I'm going to start with RV10. Nice and light. And we'll build from there, just kind of like we did on the flowers last week, where we built up just layering those three colors to give them a little bit of definition. Once again, do not be afraid if you feel like you're somebody who cannot draw. This is not, you know, we're not drawing. <laughs> we are simply going to be layering, laying our colors down um, in basic shapes uh, very strategically. <laughs> so here we go. So I'm going to start putting up some tall stalks of our gladiola right behind our little uh, daisy flowers here. And I'm just basically going to rough in... Uh, little circle shapes um, for the most part, especially at the larger blossoms um, and just kind of little oblong, um, you know, patches of color. And we're going to shrink them, you know, as we move up, our little blossoms will get smaller until we get to just the ones that haven't quite opened yet at the very top. So we're creating kind of a pyramid of circle shapes. And we start big and go small. And so I think over here, I'm gonna have one more, do another large circle there. And don't be afraid to let them get cut off um, by the flowers in front. That's why we do the, the flowers in front first is so it kind of creates that illusion of layers in the garden so that the bed as it extends back transitions into these um, large stand you know tall um, standing flowers um, and i'm even going to hint at like some that we see on the back side there a little smaller now we're tapering to just the buds at the top so there we go and then we'll do over on this side because I'm leaving the space here for our cave. Um, so I don't need the flowers all the way across. I'm just going to drop in some large flowers here. And then we won't even really see. Maybe we'll see peeking out just at the top on the other side of the wing, just the tippy top of that stand of flowers there. And we'll do one more where it's kind of grown off screen over here, but we see parts of it. Right up there, okay. All right, so from the RV10, I'm going to bring in RV52. And again, we're just going to kind of find our center and pull out. Actually, you know what I'm going to do next, just to make it easier for everybody? I'm going to come in with like a Y18. I'm going to give you your center. So we're going to give our cent ourselves our center of our flowers. So we're just going to pop in a little bit of yellow in the center of each flower. 
And as they get smaller, we're not going to, you know, see, you know, these last little ones, they're just so tight, they're not, we're not going to see the open center. So mostly it's just on these big guys. Okay, now we can start pulling our color from our yellow center, and that'll make it easier for you to reference the center of the flower. So I'm just going to pull my 52 from that yellow, just like we did with our little yellow flowers below, just kind of ringing around inside that base circle that we put down with the RV10. And it's not, you know, precision coloring. It's basically just kind of quick little dotting on of color. And we're not going to be doing any blending out. We're just going to let these colors stand. <coughs> Excuse me. It's RV55. I'm using more of the tip of the nib so I get a smaller pull with this darkest color in our combo. That's going to darken the center of our flowers. And we're going to use it quite heavily on our little buds on top because they're tightly wrapped, so they're going to be nice and dark. I know I said I wasn't going to blend out, but I'm kind of, I want that to be a smoother transition. So I think I feel like I have to do a little bit of tip to tip since there is quite a leap between the 52 and 55. So I'm just going to do one more pass and that's going to give them more of that round shape that we're after rather than the individual petals that it was looking like with the, just the 55 tapped in there. There we go. So it's just kind of smudging everything up and giving us our little round look back. And yes, I'm going to come back in with the 10, because why not? Just to soften those outside edges. But you can see, again, I'm not being really precise, because I know I can, when I start adding the green in for these flowers, um, I can kind of eat away if I get a little carried away um, with my pinks. I can kind of eat away at it with when I add the, the foliage in, the leaves. So, you know, I'm just, again, like we mentioned last week, we're just creating the impression of flowers. We're not trying to 
do botanically uh, you know accurate renderings um, we just want to get that general look all right to our leaves now so unlike our fir first ones where we were coloring um, around the space around to create the stems this time we are just straight up drawing in our little stems and leaves um, for these flowers and I'm gonna use uh, I'll start with a YG 13 and that means I'm just going to start getting some green coming up through the center of each cluster of flowers And letting them kind of poke out as little leaves here and there. Same over here. So we just fill that space with green and then give it some little rough edges. So it plays as a, you know, as little leaves poking out here and there. Simple, simple. Again, not super precise coloring. Just wherever you want little leaves kind of coming out, you can add them in there. And now let's come in with some YG67. And just start adding some darker spots within our little patches of green. Again, nothing super precise and you know, just anywhere where we kind of heavier in the center there and then just let them kind of lighten up as they come out like so and I'm just making sure that I chose different greens than I used on the other flowers or on the grass just so that, you know, it helps everything, you know, be all our different plants um, read as more individual, you know, that they're not all running together. Okay. And I think I want to soften the 67 just a touch. So one more pass of the YG13 right over top. And I'll just soften and pull. And we'll have a lovely little, you know, two-tone depth of color, creating that illusion of shading within our tall standing flowers here. Really, I mean it's it it looks impressive once you get it done. Um, but it's really not a lot of work. I mean, when you break it down, it's just, you know, tapping in color. You know, we did little straight flicks for our daisies, circles, basically, for our gladiola, and just basic shapes. If you can handle basic shapes, you can handle this. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. We've got, well, let's go ahead and 
I'm just debating because now we're done with these flowers. Um, and we've got one more patch of flowers that we're going to be adding to this. I'm just debating um, whether we're going to break it apart and start it up again next week or if we continue on this week. And I think we're going to continue next week because it's going to be a lot of flowers. All right. So that's it for this week. We got our, our gladiola into our garden that our little dragon is enjoying in front of its cave, even though the cave isn't there yet. It's coming, I promise. Um, so thanks for joining me once again. And until next week, stay crafty, my friends. Bye.